What kind of spoiled pigs don't eat pizza crust? Maybe they don't do gluten. Is it gluten free pizza crust? Oh. It's like, it's like my own children. You gotta force them to eat the crust. You don't get another slice till you eat your crust. That's a rule. Yeah, piggy, piggy, piggies. Yeah, piggy, piggy, piggies. Oh, little piggy. Oh. Oh, they like milk though. Oh, they like milk so much. Listen to those sounds. Piggy's getting fat off of cow milk. <laughs> These Cooney Coonies, they are claimed to be grazing pigs. And I wanna talk for a minute about grazing pigs, uh, why we got Cooney Coonies and, and all this stuff because I know this will be uh, a point of contention with some people on the channel. First off, pigs are not ruminants. Their systems are not designed to turn grass into protein, which pigs need protein to get big and fat and delicious. Cooney Coonies are not a magical pig that somehow developed a rumen. They're not a, a little mini cow that looks like a pig and makes bacon. So when people describe a Cooney Cooney or an IPP, Idaho pastured pig, uh, as a grazing pig, what they're saying is that they're a pig that's better suited to put in a pasture. Why? One of the reasons is the nose. They claim an upturned nose means they will root less, which means they will damage your pasture less. So if you put them out in your pasture, they'll do less damage to it. Every pig will eat grass. There's no pig that will go into your field with grass all around it and say, no, I don't want to bite this. They're going to bite the grass. But much like you and me, if all you eat is lettuce, we're not ruminants, uh, you're not going to get big and, you know, fat off of lettuce. So these pigs, are they going to get big and fat off of just grass? Not anytime soon. From what I've been reading and, you know, the limited amount of information that's out there, they're a rare breed, it's, it's a newer thing. Same with the Idaho pastured pigs. Um, people are saying when you put them on pasture, after about a year, they will be, you know, large enough where you can butcher them. It's, it's not that the Kuni Kuni magically is going to get a, you a bunch of meat off of your grass. But kind of like the mini jerseys, um, they're lighter on your pasture. They're easier on your pasture. They have less needs dietary. They're a slower growing animal in the first place. So as long as you're not trying to grow a bunch of food fast, uh, they can get stuff off of your pastures, off of less. But that doesn't mean we're not gonna supplement their diet. I've been reading from you know the more reputable sources who talk about raising Cooney Coonies. They give them a, two cups of pig feed a day. So they're getting protein in the form of pig feed. If you really want to raise pigs off of grass, there is a way to do it. There's a secret trick to raising any pig off of grass. And an old time farmer shared it with me way back when I bought my second pigs. I love these things, they're at my feet. Pigs are always at your feet. One of my favorite things about pigs is when you're standing there talking, they're just down there chomping at your feet, biting your shoes, untying. Pigs always, um, Classic shoelace and tires. After you come out of the pig pen, if you've been standing around not paying attention, your shoelaces will always be untied. So just expect that. I'll share the secret with you on how to raise pigs off of grass in just a minute, but first we gotta go milk. <laughs> it's all they can. What do you got there? What do you think, bud? That's I awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what what you got there? Got a new cart, new, new as it was lost in the recesses of the basement here, <laughs> um, behind the furnace. So, wow! All the tires were flat. They're all still good. I just blew up those tires, and I was just gonna start looking on Craigslist for something like this. Cause the rubber tires, my other cart's got plastic tires, and you can hear me coming miles away. 
and it jitters. And I blasts. often joke that's how the cows know I'm coming. It's their call to come down to the barn. <laughs> so now I can sneak up on them. Ooh, show that new bucket. I want to show that, that new slash bucket. It's got milk in it. Austin was so excited about this item, and I was like, like that. We've come to the point in our life when a bucket really like makes a us happy. Ten dollar bucket. So it better be good. It better be good. Not a Yeti bucket, but yeah. this bucket is. Uh, the other day we were talking to my in-laws. My father-in-law was at the house, and we were talking to him about piggy slop. We got pigs now. Uh, if you got, you know, if you got slop, bring it down. So we were, he was like, oh, I'll bring it. I'll put it in a plastic bag. Plastic bags get gross when you put slop in them. So we were like, we need to find a bucket system where you have two buckets and you bring one and we feed the pigs and send you home with the clean one and then you reverse them. And he found these really great, they're called M&M Industries. Uh, they make this really awesome slop bucket. It's, I don't think it's made for slop, but it's perfect for slop. It's a two and a half gallon. Is this a two and a half gallon or a five gallon? This might be a five gallon. This one might be a five gallon, but you can get a two and a half gallon one. Uh, but the cool thing, why I'm so excited about a stinking slop bucket, it has a lock on it, so, you know, like, you, the kids won't get into it and play in it or whatever, or animals. Uh, the dogs always get into the slop bucket when we're bringing slop out, and I hate that because they're not supposed to eat that stuff. So it's, it's a locking lid, which I'll show you. I gotta put it down to open it. Gotta go like this, unlocks your slop bucket, and it's got a gasket in there so it doesn't stink up your house, your stinky slop. And of course, today's slop is milk we haven't used to feed milk-fed pork. Skimmed milk. Skimmed milk, yeah. We have an excess of milk right now because I'm milking Luna every day. I'm keeping the calves off of her, which means we're getting about a gallon and a half each time we milk her. And that builds up really fast. Nice thing is now we've got the pig, so we can skim the cream, make butter, I uh, make yogurt with it, we'll start making some cheeses. We still have excess. We skim the cream, feed it to the pigs. They are happy pigs. Sure. Something we noticed when we started raising our own food was you get into the habit. Your consumption kind of raises and falls with the cycle that the animals put you in. So when we don't have eggs in the winter, we find ourselves eating a lot less eggs. And then when they start laying again in the spring and summer, we kind of pick up our egg consumption. And that'll happen with the cows too. We hadn't had cow's milk for a long time. We were off dairy because of the baby not being able to have it. It was easier to keep it all set, um, just keep it out of the kitchen for me. But now that we're back to milking, we remember when the kids want something to eat uh, with a snack, we'll have a glass of milk too. That'll help fill you up. We're raising, now we're raising our demand to what the supply is. Is what supply is coming in. Here we go. All done? I think so. I'll see how the bucket looks. Should do a teed update too. So we'll do it with the uh, thing off. See what that does for cream. If I don't have to drag that calf in every day, that'd be great. Looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Uh, point it out. Now that's where she was all cut up. Yeah, so both sides. It's looking really good. Now, we didn't get stitched or anything by the vet. <laughs> From what I've heard, what I was told, unless there's uh, milk coming out of the cut, so if there was milk spraying out of that cut up there, it's best not to stitch it. It'll heal on its own. And that's what we're seeing. We pulled the calf off because it just wasn't getting better and then she wasn't letting them nurse off of that teeth. So I was doing some, kind of like an udder balm over it. But it's looking really good now. You're a good girl, huh? 
So we're working on upping our consumption of milk right now. But she's still giving us more than we can use. We're sharing with friends, trading it for some pig slop, but we're also using it to feed the pigs. So that's a really good protein source for them. They can root around in the soil. They can get bugs and grubs and stuff like that. That's what they're looking for. Milk's a great addition to their diet for protein. Hi, Mel. So we learn how to properly greet a camel. You're supposed to not make eye contact, put out your hand for them to sniff it on their terms, say like, hi, Mel, and kind of go like that. We got two eggs. Nice, show those eggs off. What do we got? Egg. How many? Two. Oh, put them in the egg basket. Oh, am I not recording that? Good lord, Austin. That's okay, they're doing it again. Huh? Uh, 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 you a piggy? Look at you, Mr. Farm Boy. Oh yeah, don't let the piggy bite him. Come up. They get a little too fresh. The little pig. What are these? Pig. Yeah, little water. We're about to head back to the pigs and talk about one way that any homesteader with any pigs, no matter what the breed, can grass feed them and get good results. But first, it's time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out. And this is shout out. The Homesteady Camel Train is a 100 day journey growing our own food, better quality food that's gonna make your family healthier, my family healthier, the food we grow, inspiring you to grow your own food. We are on day 61, I think, of the camel train, which is incredible. There are 39 days left of this journey. Today, our shout out goes to Sheila. Sheila is not new to permaculture or homesteading at all, but she has just recently purchased a new property to homestead on in Colorado. There, she's gonna be building her homestead from the ground up. That's one of the most exciting times in your whole homesteading journey is when you get that new property and the possibilities are endless. Now she has the opportunity to create the homestead that she's been envisioning for so long. This vision that she has right now, she's not sticking with just this one idea. She's open to the possibility that as she experiments and tries new things, it will change over time. And whatever things prove to be more self-sufficient, more sustainable, and healthier, that's what she's gonna stick with. That's kind of what we're doing here with these pigs of ours, right? We're experimenting with a new kind of pig, a pig that's supposed to do better on grass. We're seeing what we can do and how we can do better at it. Uh, that's the way to approach homesteading, Sheila, for sure. She's excited to join the Homesteady Camel Train because it gives her lifetime access to the Pioneer membership. And she's looking forward to, with that membership, having more content, a community to go to to ask questions and find some answers. And she's looking forward to learning and growing with other like-minded homesteaders. That's what the Pioneer program is all about. The program is not Aust teaching what Aust knows. Our Pioneer program, 
every week we do interviews. Once in a while I do a show that's just me, but most weeks it's interviews with somebody else who's an expert in their field. We have an expert coming on the show soon to talk about grass-fed pigs because I have not grass-fed pigs myself. I've been a pro, you know, a uh, soy feed pig guy. So we're gonna get the experts in on the Pioneer program every week, new experts. We interview them because they know more than me and they know more than some of you and some of you are them that we interview. <laughs> so she's really looking forward to being a part of this. Sheila, we're excited to have you in the Pioneer program on the camel train. Thank you for being a part of this. You watching, you can't join the camel train, but you can become a Homesteady Pioneer. If you click there, you can get access to the Pioneer program for as little as $5 a month. You can join us live every Monday night for our, sh our full length show, our interviews. You can ask questions of our guests and you can get access to the library of all our past episodes. So Sheila, enjoy being a pioneer. I hope you do. I'm looking forward to having you along. Join us for some of the live shows. Those are always really fun. And for the rest of you, uh, if you wanna be a pioneer, click there. Now let's get to the secret of how to grass feed any pig, no matter what the breed. Well, we're gonna start breeding German pig shepherds. So the secret, the secret to raising grass-fed pigs, pigs that can actually get big and fat just from grass, you need a middleman. You need your cow. Way back when I got my third and fourth pigs that I'd ever purchased, they were Tamworth pigs. We bought them from a farmer back in Connecticut who raises Tamworth pigs, and he also raises Randall cattle. And as we were picking up the pigs from him, he says, now you gotta buy yourself a family cow. You'll go broke feeding these kids. <laughs> kids, I'll go broke feeding these kids, that's for darn sure. You'll go broke feeding these pigs all the grain that they need. Get yourself a cow, goes out in the field, eats up the grass, comes in, you take the milk, give your wife and kids some of the milk, and pour the rest out for your pigs. Milk fed pork is some of the best tasting pork you'll ever get. He said that milk was a natural, raw milk was a natural dewormer for pigs. I don't know if that's true, but I've heard it before. Pigs can get fat off of cow milk. That's for darn sure. A lot of farmers will separate, uh, make cheese and they'll take the whey. The whey is a higher protein and they'll feed that to the pigs. So that's your secret, because a cow is a ruminant, and what a ruminant does is, this has been fascinating, we've been learning about this because of our camel that, that we've been talking to. The way the rumen works, there's bacteria in the rumen. You're not feeding the cow grass, you're feeding the bacteria in the cow's rumen grass. And what happens is those bacteria, the bacteria inside of the rumen is what digests the grass. And then that bacteria eventually dies. And that is the protein that your cow gets. Fascinating how that works, the rumen. It's, it's amazing. So pigs don't have a rumen. They will eat grass just like humans don't have rumen, but we'll eat lettuce and we can enjoy it. And these pigs obviously like eating grass all day long. But if you really want pigs to get fat off of grass, get yourself a cow, send the cow out into the field, they're really easy on pastures. They're much nicer on pastures than even the most grazing pig you could find. And then come in, milk your cow, and like we're doing, feed your pigs milk. And that's the best way any homesteader can have grass-fed pork, grass-fed pigs. These pigs are eating a ton of grass. We will be getting them out on pasture for the sake of, you know, feeding them as much from the, the land that we own and less grain than we have to, but they're getting scraps, they're getting milk, and they're getting also a little bit of pig grain because gotta get that protein to get a big fat piggy. They are so cute. Listen to those sounds. Piggy's getting fat off of cow milk. <laughs> <laughs> 